shout of praise. Come on. Let's put our hands. Here we go. I've got to reign forever. And all the world will know His name Everyone together Sing the song of the reading
相信唱，即使我没看见你在工作，即使我没感觉你在工作，你不停止，你不停止工作，你不停止，即使我没看见，即使我没看见你在工作，即使我没感觉你在工作，你不停止。Come on, the Lord is working right now in this place. Even when I don't see it, You're working. Even when I don't feel it, You're working. You never stop. You never stop. You're working here right now. It's not about circumstances. Even when I see it, You're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop. Oh, you never stop. Never stop. Cause you never are. Stop. We make a miracle work. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are. We make a miracle work. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who You are. That is who. That is who You are. 
God is who you are. What should you sing? In all of our circumstances. We make a miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, God is who you are. Let's sing this with all our hearts. He is. We make a miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. You will make a way. We make a miracle work and promise keep a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Just continue to linger in His presence, church. Father, we thank you. Truly, you are the God who will make a way. When there seems to be no way, even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it, for you work in ways often that we cannot see, but with love and strength for each new day, you will make a way. You know what, church? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge Him for He will make your path straight. For the Lord is my God and my salvation. Whom shall I afraid? For the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I fear? For if my God is for me, who can be against me? There's no weapon form, not even during this pandemic, shall prosper. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church, wherever you're tuning in from today, I invite you to just lift up your hands to the heavens in a posture of total surrender that you are the God, the miracle worker, the promise keeper. Receive the blessings, church. Receive your healing right now. Receive your restoration right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name.
wishes to you the lord turn his face toward you and give day thank you creative team for always bringing us into his amazing presence why don't you give the creative team a big round of applause and praise him for the wonderful worship this morning thank you so much and as you take your seats this morning are you ready for the word we have such a very special speaker this morning and he is all the way from Penang and he's not on video he's right here in the sanctuary with us 
We are so blessed to have him with us, and he has brought his wife along, Susie, with us as well in the sanctuary. Why don't you stand up and wave at the on to the on-site audience here? Uh, Pastor Sam Surendran is a very long time and good friend of Scala and SIB. He is the founder and senior pastor of EPCC, XL Point Community Church in Penang, which is about over a thousand members strong and growing. I've always loved his messages, full of hope, full of humor, and always full of high energy. And he's spoken to the youth and to our church services many times over the years. He's a full time pastor author, husband of Susie, father of two, Jeremy and Ashley, and we're so privileged to have him here with us this morning. Will you give a big warm Scarlet welcome to Pastor Sam? star man it's really prophetic because when they were doing the mic check just now I told them can you tune it to be sound like Harry Styles now I know why wow this is so good thank you so much it's so kind so generous Pastor Philip thank you so much Pastor Nancy all the pastoral team and the elders Pastor Philip told me that I'm your first guest speaker after the MCO wow <laughs> Pastor Philip was our first guest speaker after we opened. So we're just uh, taking turns to, you know, be the first. <laughs> so it's such a joy, such a joy to be here and such a joy. Thank you, worship team. What an amazing team. Wow. Guys, you are blessed. You are blessed. But I like the, you know, I like the worship leader. You know, when he worship lead, you have no choice. You better worship. Because, you know, the muscle comes out. We make a... I was scared, but then I look at him and say, better worship. Uh. Thank you so much, team. Give them a big hand. Thank you so much. To all our E family, all those watching online, God bless you, including our Mandarin congregation, uh, Tatia Hao, Chao An. You know, I don't know much, lah, but uh, anyway, we are all different background Intu Ren, Malai Ren, Hua Ren. Kadazanren, Womanchi, Ichiaren, Hallelujah. Amen. Anything more than that? Puchitao. That's good enough, ready. Anyway, let me tell you when I walked out of the aeroplane and then into the, uh, to the door where we exit the, the main building, I looked at Sabah and I said, Man, I miss Sabah. I've been away for, I supposed to come four times, but you know, all the meetings were cancelled. But it's such a joy that we are able to come back. Anyway, you know what? Uh, you know that Sabah has been famous for many reasons. Uh, we read in the newspaper every day about Sabah. Praise God. You know why not? Because Sabah is going to be a gateway for God's revival. Come on. Sabah is going to be a gateway for God's revival. I believe whatever that is happening in the natural, God is actually speaking something spiritual and you are being marked for something significant. All right, no, prophecy has been spoken over Sabah that this will be a gateway for, an eastern gateway for revival. How many of you believe, say amen with me? Amen. All right, praise God for that. And also, I want to just congratulate all of you for your amazing, amazing uh, building project that is coming up. Big hand, congratulations, everybody. What a joy, what a joy, what a joy. You know, when, and, and that's the reason why um, I remember when we first entered into a building project, the Lord challenged me and said, Sam, don't sell the building to your people. Sell the vision of the builders. Sell the vision of the builders. So I asked God, what is that? I wondered what is that when God told me, don't sell the building, but sell the vision of the builders. God told me to tell the church that it's not about the building, but it's about us who are building and what we're going to see and how God will use us in the, in the process of being, seeing the building. So I wondered, I said, God, how? But as I was thinking that, and the Lord reminded me in 2004, we were on our sabbatical break in Sarawak. And on one Sunday morning, I was getting dressed to go to church. I was wearing my shirt. 
and we were on the 23rd floor or something in an apartment. I looked down, there was this huge church, um, uh, Methodist church. And I looked down and I said to God, God, give me a big building like that. You know, every pastor's desire. Give me a big building like that, Lord. And you know, I've never heard God whisper so clearly to me. And the Lord said this, Sam, don't ask for big building, ask for big people. Wow, I stopped for a while. I said, don't ask for big building, ask for big people. Because it's big people who will give you a big building. Hallelujah. What's the use? You have a big building, but you don't have big people. So God said, ask for big people. And big people don't have to be in the bigness of your size, the bigness of your spirit. God don't want you to be superman, but be supernatural. Somebody say amen. God wants you to be supernatural. Talking about superman, you know, Muhammad Ali in his heydays, he was in an aeroplane and as they were about to take off, the, the stewardess came by and said, Mr. Ali, good morning, sir. We are about to take off. Could you please fasten your seat belt? And she walked away and instructing other passengers and she came back just before the plane took off and she saw Muhammad Ali was not wearing the seat belt and she went over, politely said, sir, Mr. Ali, we need to take off. Could you please wear the seatbelt, sir? And Muhammad Ali said, Superman don't need to wear seatbelt. Wise as the word she said, sir, Superman don't need an aeroplane. Please buckle up. <laughs> you don't have to be a Superman, but you need to be supernatural. Because when you become supernatural, you become big people. See, when you are big people, you will build big church. And the size of the church that you have will not be even be enough because you need to look for another place. And you need to multiply services because you are big people. And that's the reason why I'm going to share with you a message today. It's called Possessing Your Position. Possessing Your Position in Christ. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you one story in the New Test Old Testament and give you a point from there and one story from the New Testament and give you a point from there and then we will land. Is that right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that your word will bring life and give life to everyone who's here on site and for every one of our family online. Bless everybody, Holy Spirit. Do your wonderful work. This is your word and this is your people. Make the connection in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Now, let's go to the first point. The first point that I have for you is this. I want you to see that if you're going to be a big people, that you need to recognize the God-given authority to possess. So the title is called Possessing Your Position. Possessing Your Position. So you, we need to recognize the God-given authority for you to possess. We cannot just possess because I say so. You possess because you know God says so. And this is what... I want to bring your attention to from the story of Moses. Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. I'm going to read all the way to verse 5. But Moses protested again. What if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say, the Lord never appeared to you? You know, Moses made many uh, excuses why he should not become the saviour to lead Israel out of the... From the, prom, from the land of bondage to the promised land. Then verse 2 says, Then the Lord asked him, What is it that in your hand? And he said, A shepherd's staff. Moses replied. You know, it's interesting that, that God was actually prophetically working something in Moses, which many times when I read this, I didn't see that God was actually restoring the authority for him to possess the authority for him to possess. And God asked him, what's in your hand? You know, a plain bar of iron could probably be worth about $5. But when it's made into a horseshoe, it will probably be worth about $50. But when it's made into many, many needles, probably you can make a $5,000 out, out of it. But when its original price is probably only $5. But when it's made into a spring, for a Swiss, Swiss watch, the bar of iron could worth more than 500,000. You know, but let me tell you, but when you make it into a nail and you use it in the hand of a saviour, that bar of iron can save the whole world. It depends on what is in your hand. And the Lord asked him, what is in your hand, Moses? 
I'm sure Moses was holding the staff of a shepherd all his while, right? He didn't go like this. What's in your hand, Moses? Oh my goodness! Oh, it's a staff. I don't think he did that, you know. What's in your hand, Moses? Staff. Not surprised, right? But I ask you, what's in your hand, Brother Peter? He doesn't have to look down and say, Oh my Lord, it's a phone, Pastor. No. Cool, lah. What's in your hand? Phone, lah. But Moses probably did not recognize the authority of God. Verse 3. And the Lord told him, Throw it down on the ground. So Moses threw down on the staff and it turned into a snake. Moses jumped back. I always ask God, Why snake? Why not a guinea pig? Why not a nice puppy? Why not a frog? You know, you cannot say frog in summer. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, it just came out. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Pastor. I hope I'm getting you in trouble. Okay, let, let's, let's, let's do it again. Uh, why, not, uh, why not a cat? Why not a uh, uh, babi hutan? You know what I mean? Babi hutan means sure, they've eaten, eaten it up already anyway, so cannot. Then verse 4, look at verse 4. Then, then the Lord told him, reach out and grab its tail. So Moses reached out and grabbed it, and he turned back into a shepherd's staff in his hand. Now, I understand that the children of Israel were praying for 430 years for deliverance. But when God came through with a saviour and a redeemer, guess, guess what God does? He doesn't just answer their prayer. He changes and helps them to re-establish their authority to possess. He has to help them not just answer their prayer by telling, this is what you want, right? You want a freedom? There you go. That, that's the way out. I roll a red carpet for you. No, he re-establishes their authority to repossess. You need to see there are 3.54 million Sabahans in this state. And Skyline is in Kota Kinabalu. But I tell you, you are not here by chance. This church is not planted here by chance. You have a spiritual authority already invested in you by the Holy Spirit. But maybe we have forgotten that God has given you that authority and it's not just moving to a new location but taking up your new position first. You cannot go to a new location until God establishes your new position in Christ. And you need to recognize and re-establish that authority to repossess your position before your location comes to you. And Moses had to learn his Authority to possess. You know, this is the picture of, uh, of the headdress of a pharaoh. And if you see, there are two cobras up there. There are two cobras up there. It's called the Urias. And Urias is an is a upstanding cobra. And cobra is actually one of the goddesses of Egypt. And Renut. Renut is one of the goddesses of Egypt. Number one, She's the goddess of, the, uh, of agriculture, which is Egypt being an agrarian society. So they are strong in the economy. So she controls the funds. Secondly, she's also the goddess of fertility, life. And she's also known as the guardian of Pharaoh. So I don't think God asked Moses to throw the rod and then the rod becomes a snake there must be a reason. Do you know this? Let's establish this. Look at um, Psalms 110 verse 2. The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion saying, rule in the midst of your enemy. Do you know a scepter or a rod or a staff is a picture of authority? Like remember in the, in the book of uh, Esther, Esther was afraid to get into the presence of the king because she was not invited. But if she goes in and the king decided not to kill her, he has to extend his golden scepter and touch her. Now the golden scepter speaks about his authority as a king to receive her, though not invited. Now the picture that you see is a picture of the king holding a scepter. Sorry, it's an animated picture. I tried to find the rest all very expensive, so... I have to get this one. But at least I'm honest. Lah. <laughs> at least I'm honest. Use what is permissible. Now, the, the, in the hand of the king is a scepter. A scepter is the authority of a ruler. The scepter is the authority of a ruler. Let me help you. 
Let me help you. You know, God is telling Moses, he had this rod in his hand for 40 years. He forgotten that the rod is actually a symbol of authority. And God tells him, throw it down. And then he tells, it becomes a snake and then he asks him to pick it up. What's happening? You remember when God is giving, her, giving him a lesson in timeline to repossess. So when he held the rod, God is telling him, when you were under Joseph, when you were under Joseph many, many years ago, you had a great life and the authority was in the hands of God's people. And because of Joseph, you had favor and you moved into the land of Goshen and you prospered. And when God told him to throw the rod and the rod became a serpent and the Lord saying, but you lost your authority. When you threw, and he threw the rod because a next group of pharaohs came and they started ruling. Remember the headgear of Pharaoh? What is the number one thing? The Ureas says, now when you lost after Joseph died, are the other uh, pharaohs came up and you lost your authority. But now God is telling them, for 430 years you lost your authority and you are living under subjection. Now the Lord say, pick it up. Lord say, pick up the snake. You know what? It's dangerous to... The best and the safest way is to hold it by the head so that it will not strike you. But God say, nah, pick up by the tail. In Penang, we'll say, Unyabo. Are you crazy or what? Eh? Are you serious? Or pick up from the tail. You better pick up from the head. Lah. But have you wondered why God asked him to pick up from the tail? Because he took care of the head. You remember in Genesis 3.15, Jesus, the father said to the woman after he spoke the judgment over her, to Adam, then to Eve, and then to the serpent, and he said to the serpent, he says, you will strike his heel. You will only cause a, a short-term hurt for the Son of God. You will strike his heel, but, his, but her seed will strike your head. God took care of the head many years ago. He made you take care of the easiest thing because the Son of God took over and took care for you the hardest thing on the cross. Come on, He took care of the head and He's telling you, take care of the tail, that's all. You took care, I took care of the head for you on the cross. The cross has the final word. A lot of people think the vaccine has the final word. Praise God, I pray for the vaccine. Lah. But the cross has the final word. Amen. You know why you all are here? You don't even have the vaccine. But of course our families, many of our e-families cannot come because of many reasons. But you brave, you came because the cross is the final word. You believe. The cross has done the work for you. So God is telling, uh, God is telling Moses, I've done the work for you on the cross. I will do the work for you. My son will come and he will fix the head. But it's prophesied. It's done. Now Moses, possess. Possess. Take it back. I say to you, Skyline, this is your position. It doesn't start with the location. It starts with your position. Because when you recognize and you come into your position, I tell you, the location will be sub sub so yeah. The location will be easy. The location will be bearable. The location will be yours. And you will go there seeing yourself. The vision is not the building. The vision starts with the builder. Tell you what, I'm so excited for you because God's going to do some powerful things with people here. This, this is a praying church. I know this is a praying church. You guys pray every morning, 6 o'clock by Zoom. You used to pray on site last night. I really envy how you guys do that. 300, 400, sometimes 500 people come, full house. That's revival, man. God has prepared you. Come on, the Lord is saying to you, possess. Possess whatever God is giving you. Saba, need Jesus. Come on. Sabah is not just going to be famous for all the wrong reasons. We're not going to read just news about Sabah in the newspaper for wrong reasons. We're going to read Sabah, good news, good report, great report, spiritual report will come out of Sabah. Somebody say Amen. Come on, I say Skyline, possess. Possess. He has taken care of the head. You take care of the tail. Possess what God has given you. That's what God wants you to do. 
But people say, you know, you must be a bit crazy, you know. You start a building project during the pandemic. Bad timing. It's bad timing to tell Moses to lead the people out at that time. Do you know why? Because the Bible says, God told Moses, I have already made the heart of Pharaoh harden. I have made his officials stubborn. That means uh, all their defenses are up. All their military arsenals are up. All the slave drivers will know they have already all their, their whip. They already learned how to slap. They have done all the practices to get the, the people of God subjected. That's the worst time to even ask them to leave because God hardened their heart. But you know what God said? God said many times in Exodus 9.13 and the Lord says, for this time, I will send a full force of plagues against you and against your officials. It's not in the, in the slide, but listen. So that you may know that there is no one like me on the earth. Amen. God said, I've hardened their heart so that you will know that there's no one like me on the earth. You know, in Exodus chapter 9, verse 1, the Lord says, Return to Pharaoh and make your demands again. I have made him and his officials stubborn. Why? The Lord said, I displayed among them and so that you will know that I am the Lord. When you see that it is the hardest time to get this building project, whatever ministry done at this time during the pandemic, so that you will know when the building stands, when you give, when you pray, when you intercede, you will know that He is Lord. Look at this scripture in Joshua chapter 3, verse um, 15. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during the harvest. Do you know that you, the flood stage huh, is during March, April, you know? Do you know that they were been around the Jordan for a while, but God asked them to cross over Jordan huh, during the flood stage? Hey, come on. Why ask them to cross during the flood stage? Around March, April. Why, why not around October? October, November. That is the period, uh, the Jordan is really, it's not really as, uh, as, as um, the water system, as the flooding process, it's not as bad as March or April. It's the low tide time. But God told them, cross the Jordan at the flood stage. Do you know, they got all the children, la, got all the animals, la, chicken, everything running around. I mean, can you imagine they have to cross during the flood stage? Why can't he tell them to cross during the low season, low tide? Because he gives us a reason why. In verse 24, uh, sorry, verse 23 and 24 of Joshua, the same chapter, the Lord says, For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. Verse 24, He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful. Hallelujah so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Let me tell you, I always believe that, the Lord keep reminding me as we were building the, our own building, that it, as we are building, there's a lot of challenges, there's a lot of uh, uh, a journey that we have to go through. It's not about that. It's about all the time seeing God's hand. All the time seeing His love for you. All the time enjoying Him along the way. All the time seeing the goodness of a great God. Why did he ask them to cross during the flood season? So that he will be glorified. Why is God asking you to do this during a pandemic season? Why give, start a building project during a pandemic? No. So that you will see and the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord Amen. is powerful. Oh, come on. The hand of the Lord is powerful. No, 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 listen, not just, not just a few church people will see and, and other churches will see, wow, Skyline, huh? brave, huh? can do project like this during pandemic. Huh? But no, the people who do not know Jesus will see, this is for the glory of God. That they will see the God who Skyline worship is a God who has a hand who is awesome and powerful. Come on, how many of you are ready to see a, hand of power, a powerful hand of God? Somebody shout Amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. amen. The hand of the Lord is going to be powerful over your church. The hand of the Lord is going to be powerful over your church. Now we come to the New Testament. How can we talk a sermon without talking about Jesus? 
We must talk about Jesus. So, I want to establish your position for you to possess. And it starts with Jesus. Our possession in Christ. Right? Our possession, our, our position in Christ. I take the scripture from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. I want you to read. I'm going to read for you. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked. Now, I love this passage because it tells us that Jesus has been given a name that is above every name, every power, far above all rule, all authority, power, and dominion. In the Bahasa version says, Nama di atas segala nama yang boleh dinamai. That means every name that can be named. So I tell my Bahasa church, Coba cakap apa nama-nama yang kamu ingat, nama yang kamu takut. All the names that you're scared of, go story right. Suka tengok cerita hantu lah. Apa hantu-hantu yang kamu takut? What are all the ghosts you takut? Orang minyak, kuntianak, pocong, hantu dalam botol kicap, hantu kak lima. Let me tell you, you name all the names that you can ever name on this earth. English ghost, huh? Korean movie ghost, Thailand movie goes, Japanese movie goes. These are all the three countries never watch. Very scary. You name all the names. Bible says his name is higher than every other name. Every other name, no match. They cannot come near him. And he is seated high above every power and dominion. But before, before verse 19, Bible says like this, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope upon which you have been called. That your eyes may be open. Talking about eyes, a boy was playing outside and he lost both his contact lenses on the sand. And he searched for 30 minutes and he came home and he was crying. He said, Mom, I lost the contact lenses. I'm so sorry. Mom, can you please help me? Mom rushed out and she searched. Only three minutes, she found both the, the contact lenses. And the boy was shocked. He said, Mom, I was searching for 30 minutes and I cannot find the contact lenses. How did you do it, Mom? And the mother said, Son, you were looking for contact lenses. I was looking for $250. <laughs> all the mothers say, all the mothers say, of course, the father should say amen louder because you're going to pay, and, uh, pay for it at the end of the day. I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened. So that you can see the power that God has for you. Now, now look at this. I, I help you. Let me help you. Verse, verse, uh, Ephesians chapter two, verse six says this. And God raised up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Now, okay, let me let me tell you. Here we have Jesus seated in the heavenly places, and then here we are. The Bible says God has raised us, raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms. We can say, but you know, Pastor easy for you to say that Jesus is seated. Of course, He has the, all the authority, all the recognition being on the right-hand side of God. But what am I? What am I? This pandemic season will help you to make the connection between we who are also seated in heavenly places. But you say, Pastor, but I'm on earth. How can I be in heaven but I'm on earth? How can I exercise my power when I'm on earth? Let me tell you, all this video conferencing that we are doing right now, one of it, we call it Zoom. We zoom here, zoom there, zoom here, zoom there until we all become zombie, really. <laughs> right or not? But you know, when you have Zoom, right? Zoom has proven to us that one person can be in two locations at the same time. Whatever you say, I can be in Penang and I can speak to my friends in Singapore. Whatever I say in Penang, it is as good as what I'm saying in Singapore. Come on, somebody say Amen. All they need to do is to give me a password and I connect that password and the password gives me an access to be able to speak everything authoritatively and as real as I need to be in Singapore and whatever Sam said in Penang is true as in Singapore. Come on, somebody. All I need is I need, I need a password. Let me tell you, in the heavenly realm, God has given us a password and His name is J-E-S-U-S. -S. 
and through that password you can have access to heaven and that's why Jesus said whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven come on somebody he's given you an access you don't just zoom has proven to us that one human being can be in one can be one person can be in two locations at the same time and that's the same way you are on earth but you are on earth the bible says but you're seated in heavenly places do you realize how powerful you are come on you need to possess and why you can possess not because jesus is sitting and you are here left all by yourself no sir you have the zoom power come on you have the zoom authority come on you have the zoom access and you have the zoom password to jesus and you don't have the zoom password like what numbers but the zoom pa- password is jesus and when you have the password that zoom becomes boom come on that zoom becomes boom in your life and it changes you because you're on earth but you can access the things in heaven you're on earth but you're seated in heavenly places how can if you believe zoom works for you you are in kota kinabalu you can meet, have meetings and make decisions and make monetary decisions in another city if you believe in zoom my friend how come you don't believe for the things of god spoken in ephesians 2:6 you are on earth but god given you access to heaven come on somebody say amen god's given you access to a, to heaven so i pray as we close that not just we don't just going to go through but we're going to see a breakthrough in jesus christ i pray that we will not just go through but we'll see a breakthrough in jesus christ amen. now in all this let me say this to you in all this our goal is not to make us go through something our goal is but to see God through it. Let me say again I read it, I wrote this down so that you can remember. You can you can tweet this. The goal is not to make us go through something but to see God through it. Oh, I I'm seeing God in this pandemic. It's not just to go through it lah. I hope finally praise God we got the vaccine. You know what? You know what I mean? What a waste. What a waste. He says, "Oh, God, give us the vaccine fast!" And he goes, "Oh, psh, praise God! Now I can go party." No, no, no! It's not just to go through something, but to see God through it. <laughs> Come on, to see God through it. And in this whole process, as you, once again, not think only about the location, but think about your possession and your position, that you see God through it. And this journey. Of you rebuild and building is going to be so exciting because you're going to see God through it. When the hard times come, the difficult time comes, the challenging times come, the fearful time comes. As your days, Bible says, so shall your strength be. As your days, so shall your strength be. I pray the Holy Spirit has given you a handle wherever you are to help you to possess. your position come on give him praise one more time will you do that let's all stand together church come on give him praise hallelujah lift your hand let me pray for you hallelujah father in the name of jesus the son of god i thank you for this awesome church i thank you for the amazing promise that we have in jesus christ i thank you holy spirit that you have seen them that you're going to see them through but as you see them through they will see god through it lord as you see them through they will see god through it holy spirit i pray right now for our e families those that are watching online in their living room in their bedroom father as they are receiving your word right now holy spirit for the people who are here in this location holy spirit i pray stretch your hand lord right now they will not just go through it but they will see god through it all father touch them right now father help them to possess all that they have lost all that the enemy has taken to possess back again oh god put them back lord in their position holy spirit right now in their family in their business what the devil has stolen away lord what the enemy has robbed the joy out of that marriage the joy that has been taken away from their schooling life from their education father from their 
business opportunities, whatever that has been stolen, I declare over you, Skyline, that this is a season of repossessing what the enemy has taken from you. I say to you in the name of Jesus, Father, we declare today in Jesus' name, through the password that we have into heaven, we take back in Jesus' name. In our personal life, in our family life, in our children's life, we take back in Jesus' name. Our disobedient, our wayward children, our delinquent issues in our life, we say, we take it back in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. You took care of the head. We take care of the tail. You took care of the difficult. We take care of the easy. Come on, Lord. Right now, move in this place. Come on, Lord. Move in this place. Come on, Skyline. Take back from your family, from your children, from the lost marriage, from the lost relationship. Come on, Skyline. Take it back. Take it back in Jesus' name. Take it back. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. Come on, we're going to take back from Saba. The snake. The snake of destruction. Come on, we're going to take back righteousness through justice. In Saba, we take back. We take back from Saba. All the evil, we take back. We possess, Hallelujah. we possess, Lord, we possess, Lord, Hallelujah. Freedom, going for you, you, and beside you, all around you, and within you, He's with you, He's with you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping, and rejoicing, He's for you, 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 He's for you. Sing. 